Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we're going to be installing this SIG Energy Power Store. This is a new product to our channel, it is a sponsored video to say right from the outset. And it has some unique features other products on the market don't have. I'm going to cover these right at the start now and then we're going to run through the whole installation process. So this is an energy storage device. So in this tower you've got your battery storage modules. We have an 8 kilowatt hour battery module on the bottom here and a 5 kilowatt hour battery module above it giving us just over 13 kilowatt hours of battery storage. In this application you can stack these up to 6 high per tower. It's got an inverter built in so this is a hybrid inverter where we're bringing our PV strings and our AC grid connection so we can feed energy in both directions to the battery and from the battery but also integrate PV. There is also soon to be coming to the UK market in July a DC EV charging module that goes in this stack and that allows you to send energy to your electric vehicle in a DC variety so making maximum use of your solar generation rather than limited to the AC inverter output you can fire all of that straight at the vehicle I believe up to 25 kilowatts of power going in that direction and also you can power your house loads and feed back to the grid through the V2X or V2G, V2H, however you want to terminology on that is um, outside my wheelhouse but you are able to power your home and power your grid from your vehicle subject to manufacturer approval in terms of the electric vehicle and also DNO agreements. All of those things get a bit complicated in the UK and that's why I think we're waiting to July for that to be available. There is also an AC EV charger that you'd be more traditionally used to that can go as a separate product to the side of the um, stack here should you wish and that's in a 7 kilowatt variety as we're normally used to. This will output 2.5 kilowatts from the 5 kilowatt hour battery module and it will output 4 kilowatt from the 8 kilowatt hour battery module. So with the two we've got here that's 6.5 kilowatts of power outputted from these batteries. The inverter that we're using is a 6 kilowatt inverter and that allowed to peak off-grid supply of up to 9 kilowatts. I'll put the data sheet links in alongside this video because it's a lot to take in. We're going to run through the entire install now and we'll talk about the specific features of this running through it. One final point I want to make at the start of all this, we're obviously in an outside location due to the recent changes in PAS and the concerns we have in terms of battery safety and SIG Energy have gone to town in their battery modules. There are heat pads between all of the, the cells in the way that they're put together within the battery packs themselves. There is also fire suppression, temperature monitoring, there is vent ports as well for if there is ever an issue where that energy can vent away from the product. So they've thought about this and again there'll be links in alongside this video for you to go and check that out. But it's super impressive having the fire extinguisher function built into the product and all of the extra monitoring through the BMS system is a huge thumbs up for me, especially if you're going to consider installing these in indoor environments, which in this application we've managed to avoid. Let's get straight to the install and see how it all comes together. So first point on all this is the excellent packaging. It really is good quality. The cardboard's nice and thick. There's plastic carry handles in the battery modules and you can see the guys are moving those about with ease. The weight on the batteries themselves are manageable quite easily between two people on the 8 kilowatt hour batteries and a single person, as Matthew will demonstrate in a minute, can manage the 5 kilowatt hour. And unlike some of the other products we install, there is no need to be cutting open a timber crate with a circular saw. You can see Susie observing out the window there to make sure things have been done correctly and the guys are getting all the equipment ready to start popping this on the wall. So this comes with a cardboard template so you can set your markings out and you work up based on the number of battery modules um, and then you've also got your inverter that goes on the top. So we've got a couple of battery modules with ours. So we're going to line this up and Nathan's going to hold it so Matthew can mark it. And we do use the outer holes to put the battery module fixings in. So this is our second battery and then up above that we've got the actual inverter itself and those two holes are the inner ones marked INV so we can mark those ones on as well. And we've got the base on the floor set the appropriate distance off the wall and we can make all these holes now and make sure we get this fixed nicely to the wall. 
So you can see Matthew making an excellent demonstration of drilling these holes out here. Unfortunately, the dust extractor wasn't quite long enough to go over the, the drill bit. These are M8 anchor bolts that go into the wall to secure this, just to stop it falling forward. And we've got those holes now cleaned out, ready to drop in those anchor bolts and fix this back to the wall. First, we need to stack up the battery modules and you can see the guys setting to do that right now. First one laid onto the base, ready to go. So the carry handles that come with this system are really easy to just hook around the um, bolts that run into the battery modules and then you can see the guys transporting it around. There's connectors on the top and bottom of these so as you drop them into each other all of the connections between each module is made and you see you just need to carefully line it up, gently drop it down and then the handle simply comes off ready for the next component. You can stack these up to six high but as I said we've got the two modules on this system. So you can see that's there ready to go now with the connectors on the top there as I mentioned ready to mate through to the separate components so there's no wiring or terminations that you need to make within that. There's the vent plugs on the side of the battery there that I spoke about at the start and again these have fire suppression built in so it is looking after all of those things to try and ensure in the worst circumstances it's well covered off. You can see here Matthew's just dropping in the inverter onto the top of that stack. So this is a six kilowatt hybrid inverter that we've selected for this system and it will allow a peak of nine kilowatts if we are running off grid. You can see that's there ready to start wiring away and fixing back into those M8 bolts that we've got sticking out the wall there and we can lock all of this back nice and safe onto the wall surface. It's gone together super easy. It is that simple. It is a case of just put it onto the floor stand and away you go. Equally, if you're putting this onto the um, wall bracket, it's the same sort of process. You just need to make sure you use the angled brackets on the bottom to take that weight. So you can see we're fixing the M8 bolts on now. So there's the brackets that attach onto the modules through the M5 screws, and then you need to put those into the um, M8 expansion bolts into the wall and that's just to hold it back to make sure that it's not going to fall forward and each module is fixed back to the wall surface. And you see there we're just spinning those nuts up ready to tighten them in and make sure that that's not going to wobble, move or shift anywhere whatsoever. It's sat on a bearer so there is a solid big timber underneath there taking the weight as well on paving slabs so this is going to go absolutely nowhere. This is the connector for the power cord. As you can see, it comes with various options in terms of the weather sealing aspect for it, which is nice. So based on the cable size you may be using, you've got some flexibility there. We've got a six mil HO7 going in and you can see just stripping away, ready to wire this into the connector. Keeping these as short as possible, just to try and enable as much wiring room inside the back body of the connector as possible and ensure we're going to maintain that water tightness. Obviously, this being in an outdoor location, we do not want moisture getting into any of the terminations. They are lever connectors, so super easy to wire up. You just pop those straight in, make sure you get them central and that you have got them in the right parts. It's always something I double check because that's often a mistake I can make. And you can see the label on the back there. So as long as you're paying attention, it's very difficult to go wrong. And that then simply pops down into the base of the plug. It'll only go in a certain orientation. There's some guide pins on it. And once you've got that fixed down, you bring the weather seal up the back and that is it then put together waiting for termination into the inverter itself. There's a little locking screw on there so when you do plug it in it can all be held nice and safely in place and it's not at risk of being pulled out which is particularly useful if you're using a cable run leading up to the inverter rather than straight in the back as we have here. So this is the comms cable and we installed this at this stage but as it turned out we didn't need it. So that's carrying your RS485s. We just used a cat cable so if you had a separate meter and not a gateway you'd want to go down this route and use that for wiring into the meter but because we have got a gateway you only need to use a LAN cable between the inverter and the gateway itself. This is not needed. But you live and learn with these things and it's one thing to stick in the memory bank for next time, save a little bit of the manual labour and don't be making off unnecessary connectors. But again, it's super high quality, easy to make off and the weather sealing is covered and so. So we've got all the comms ports on the side here. You see these are for your PVs, for your two strings. So your PV strings go straight into this inverter we've got our dc isolator up here 
an aerial part and then these are our um, land parts you can see that's uh, RJ45 one that's RJ45 two so we're just going to be using the one part in this case this is for the Wi-Fi stick which we're going to pop in and then these are for the power and also the comms to the gateway which you'll have seen us just wiring up there so we can pop these two aside put these in we'll start with the the power cord so it simply lines up slots in and that's that hooked on there's a little screw in there that you can fasten down as well just to lock that fully into place this is one of the rj45 leads and the other one we've used for our comms cable back to the inverter so we need to sorry the gateway so let's make sure these go in the correct way be careful with that because the pins are only small but that pushes and locks in our rj45 again make sure you get it the right way pop it in and then fasten your screw cap so that is held nicely into place so that's locked in nice and tight and then we need our usb dongle which we can get in just a second let's pop these down the back here Oops. nice little bit of wiring space to tuck things out of sight we've managed to bring our cables through at the back of the inverter which is handy and again we can just loop these around slot them down there out the way so that's super handy uh, if matthew just wants to pass me the wi-fi dongle and the antennas so the antennas in that box wi-fi dongles in the box over there i'm gonna grab me that one i stick this on so this is just a little aerial i guess to help with the signal and pop that on here that's our antenna USB stick, make sure again you, you're popping that in the right way and then fasten it down. As you can see there, that is now in nice and tight and should power up when we get to the appropriate stage. So we can pop our covers on now. I'm going to leave these caps in the side here just in case anyone ever wants those in the future. Um, but otherwise that's now waiting for the PV and we've got our power cable coming in that's a 6mm uh, HO7 so we've got that through there um, fed through to the inside and we've got our data cable here again this is shielded weather rated duct grade cat cable and then we've got the data link running out to the inverter as well should you want to use an RJ45 and we've also got the wireless transmitter USB smart product and the antenna on here as well um, So you can see we're all ready to go We can pop the covers on the side of this inverter and see how it all looks when it's dressed away nice and neat So you can see here this has got a PV input voltage range up to 600 volts the MPPT runs at 50 to 550 Which is a really wide range and we've got 20 amps for your ISC battery voltage range and the battery maximum continuous current there at 12 amps the AC output you can see here it's a 6 kilowatt um, output maximum current of 30 amps and the temperature range is minus 30 to plus 60 and this is IP66 rated there's some unique features to this battery and inverter system that we'll get to through the course of this video and we can also discuss some of the other modules you can add on to this stack if you want to grow it for EV charging um, for both AC and DC. But let's take a look at how this system goes together on the wall and then we'll jump back to have a chat about it at the end. So you can see the side panels simply push onto the stack itself and there's a little linking wires on the left hand side for the USB lights that we'll show you later on in this video but they go into the side of the inverter and then they just link together. You can see I didn't notice the end plug in the end of one of these here so that was catching me out a little bit but you can pop that out, pop that in there and that is good to go. Now they're all linked together ready to illuminate later on in the video. So these little trims up the side they simply clip on the ones on the left hand side have some LED lights in, there's little connectors that run up the side that you need to remember to clip together, but otherwise it's just a case of setting them on top of each other, locking them down, and that's it, into place, there's no fixings or fastenings, really easy to get the trim on, and it looks the business when you've got them all laid out 
in place. We'll have a little run through the whole system now it's finished and then we'll, we'll talk about my views and some of the unique features of this particular system. And there we have it mounted. You can see that's now on the wall. I'll show you how low profile it is. So it's sat very nicely and neatly against that wall there. Um, we've got a nice bearer of timber underneath it just to say these are big timbers under here that are sat on pavers. There's absolutely no wobble or movement in it. It can take that weight um, and some. So we're happy with that. And again, it's fixed back onto the wall with six um, fixings. If you do want to, you can wall, wall mount these, but the specific brackets that go on the base plate to hold that to the wall and then carry the weight of the batteries. Floor mounting just makes so much more sense with these battery systems just because of the weight involved. And again, this is more than able to carry that. So we've got no concerns there. Um, we've got our spacing off the doorway that we need. So we're over a meter just uh, for the new pass requirements. And again, uh, that's just to allow safe exit of the property. If we're to look along this wall here, we're just littered with doors, windows. It's the same down the side, there's the passage there. So again, there's entry and exit past the battery system. Couldn't go there and there's nowhere around the front. So that's about the only place we could put it and get it outdoors. Other than that, we're looking at inside. So this makes the most sense. Sun's just come out. Um, we've left these covers just loose on the side here for the minute. So these will push down a bit tighter and neater but in case we need to be in the wiring terminals, just in case we've got anything wrong when we come to the commission, we can have a look at that. But that's coming up an absolute treat. We're gonna go inside now and start working on the gateway. Nathan's been busy in the cupboard setting us out some trunking, and then we can look to start getting all of this turned on and see how it comes together in the app. So inside now you can see Matthew hanging the gateway. Now I was super impressed with this gateway in terms of its wiring room and the glands and grommets on the bottom of it. So you can see there we're bringing the tails in. So we'll run through how this is all wired up at the end of this little segment. You see there's loads of space there. We've got our grid tails coming in and you can size these based on your main supply because you've got 125 amp breakers in there, but obviously we're limited by our 80 amp DNO fuse. So these are flexi tails and they're dressing away super nice. There's various insets on the plugs that go underneath the inverter. So you've got no problems in terms of weather sealing if you did want to use this outside. Point of note with it, the breakers inside there are 60898 MCVs, double pole varieties. So it's worth factoring that in. You can see it is a fuller, fully weather sealed enclosure with a nice schematic diagram laid on the inside of the case there just in case you were wanting to reference to it with the neutral earth bond diagram clearly drawn out so we're dropping in the outgoing tails there to the consumer unit at the bottom so that goes into the backup port and then we're bringing our data cables at the top here and as i said we didn't need the rs485 comms plug in the inverter and then wiring into the little terminals at the top here this is a mistake we made by misunderstanding the instructions you just need the data cable that goes into the LAN ports between the gateway and the inverter so we've now got our six mil um, hr7 cable coming into the bottom here and you've got three inverter inputs on those mcbs so we're using inverter input one on the far left hand side and these are c40 devices so we can protect our cable adequately in the flow of energy in both directions um, and they just simply wire into the underside of those MCBs. And that's simply it at the gateway side of things. So you can see inside the gateway here, and this is a pretty simple setup in terms of the electrical wiring with all the smart stuff up in the top here. So we'll talk about that first. You've got your data connection points for your routers and connecting over to your inverters. We've also got the comms cable in, and again, you can use these dry contacts to trigger um, backup generators, make alerts that SPDs have tripped, and all that clever stuff, should you wish. We're not using that in the application we're doing here. Uh, you can see the CT meters inside here, are dotted all around so they can see what's going in. You've got a terminal for your off-grid earthing, the main earthing bar, if you're running two separate earthing systems when this switch is over. There's the SPD, which is ready to do its thing on the AC side. And then we've got all of these breakers and relays here from Chint. So in essence, our grid feed comes in. So from our electricity meter, comes into this main breaker here. And this is a C125 amp um, breaker that's double pole. So again, you can make an isolation here and that would turn the energy from the grid off coming into the gateway. 
Here they've got what's called a smart port and that's for if you're using something like a backup diesel generator or some secondary source. So you can pop that in there and the smart um, port basically links into this contactor at this side and then the grid contactor is the one at this side. Um, and you can see they're, they're wired up for the two uh, lines coming off this side. So you've got your line buzz bar runs across the top and it drops in over on this side here to these two sides of the contactor and then your neutral drops in and over at this side and then out the bottom to the line buzz bar running into your inverter breakers and also your load out. So this one here, if you can see here, it's labeled up as backup. These go off to your consumer unit or your house loads and that's basically the line and neutral feeding into all of your domestic distribution equipment that you're feeding from the gateway and then you have these three breakers here for your inverters and obviously in our case we've got the hybrid battery storage and PV inverter outside feeding in via this 6 mil cable to the C40 breaker here. So when this is in grid connected mode all these systems are basically tied together and the um, clever stuff that goes on inside the equipment will make use of the battery storage and solar PV generation. If the house loads are any higher than that, it will draw from the grid. If your PV is generating more than the battery storage and house loads needs, it'll export that to the grid. And obviously if you're choosing to charge up overnight off peak, you can take in energy from the grid out to your batteries as well. And if the grid drops out, these things kick in. So if you've got enough solar generation, you can run that alongside your hybrid inverter um, and have the the power coming back into the house loads to keep you running via the contactors that would swing open to stop the back feeding into the grid and also make the changes within the air thin as needed as well. Um, if you want you can have these pinouts again trigger certain lights and alarms because as we know now if an inverter enters a fault state through the PAS guidance you need to be doing stuff like that so those dry contacts there's four of them up there you can make use of those um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward in what it is, but it wires away quite nicely. I like the, the door. It's um, a nice big chunky door. There's a good handle on the side as well with a key, so you can lock it. Uh, warning labels up the side there too. Loads of wiring room, and you can see you get a little schematic that runs through what I was talking about here. So you've got your smart port, your grid, your backup, and all your inverters running there. And you can see your protective earth that switches out for your inverters as well. Um, if needs be. So that's all taken care of within the gateway. We're going to pop the lid on now, talk all this down. Um, we've done our dead test, so we know our cables are all good. I'm going to talk everything up, put the front cover on, and then we'll have a look at commissioning and how all of this comes together. So before we jump outside, we'll take a little look at the app, and this is still going through the commissioning stage. It's super duper fast. I've had to cut out a fair bit of this clip because it included lots of the customer's information. But all of the setup through commissioning is done through the SIG Energy app. It's really easy. You can set your maximum charge um, and discharge levels. You can set the inverter export limitation. These are ENA approved products, so we can install them and connect them into equipment in terms of the ENA requirements. And the app itself is one of the most detailed I have ever seen. The information on there is clear it's well presented you can adjust all of your charging times you can tie it in with energy tariffs it gives a clear illustration of what's actually going on with the system in terms of the individual battery modules percentage and also the current state of play if you want to make changes to any of the settings you can do that as well in terms of connectivity um, it, this has three modes of connectivity so we've got our LAN cable, we've also got the Wi-Fi connection and we have the 4G dongle. I kept referring to that as a Wi-Fi dongle but it isn't. The USB plug is a 4G data stick and then the Wi-Fi is for the internal um, Wi-Fi built into the unit. And you can see there's loads of information in terms of if it's operating correctly, you can run diagnostics. There is artificial intelligence built into this as well so you can ask questions and get answers um, based on you know the consumer's use of the app. They have control of the lighting as well, so you can change the color output, the strobing effect, and all of that good stuff. And we can set our maximum power export limit within the app as well. So we'll adjust that down to six. And you can also limit your import, should you wish. All of those things are controlled from within the app itself. And as you can see there, I really like it. I think that's a super simple way to display the system. 
and give full control via the app without needing to go into a web portal. From other manufacturers, that's usually the case. So the app's more limited. And if you want to dig into the finer detail and have more um, changes that you can make at this level, you would need to be using a web browser. But SIG Energy have tried to put as much of that as they possibly can inside the control of the app. And the grid code on this, you can see we've got it set incorrectly at the minute. That needs changing to the G99 UK grid code. And obviously, we've not tied any PV into this system as yet. There's going to be a video coming of that very soon. We're installing the PV on the roof, but this was turning into quite a mammoth video in its own right. So we've pulled that apart for a separate little segment where we're going to show you the installation of some solar panels and tie them in with this inverter and the app in a little bit more detail down the line. You can see the warranty sat there at 10 years and there's information of how you can adjust, amend and monitor that going forward and also register your warranties direct with SIG Energy from the consumer side of things. I'm going to have to blare a few bits and pieces of this out of the screen, which is going to be a frustrating challenge for me in terms of editing, but I can see the consumer's address is on there, so we're going to have to blare some bits and pieces out, so apologies for that. You can see we've got this energised now, so we've got our grid switch in the on position. It's drawn the contactor in to put power through to all of our house loads, the SPD and the inverter outside itself. So that's now all working and connected to the internet of things, which is good. The product's doing its software update and running through the final stages of commission. So we can go and have a look at that in just a second. And pop the door to on this, give it a little close off. And you can see it's a little lock on the side there as well. So you can lock that from any fingers that you don't want to be poking at it. And I think that's come up quite nice, as I say. It is what it is for wiring away all your final circuits on this one. And just to talk through how it works again, because, oh, if I can get the handle around, there we go. We have our main power come into the grid, which feeds across to the contactor. This pulls the power in to take out the power for the house loads, um, draws the inverter in, SPD, any other inverters. If the grid drops out, then it, breaks the contactor so we can't backfeed into the wider system but we can stay running in island mode and our earth switches in as well as needed so that's got us all covered off you can see here we've got a c125 on the um, backup circuit we've got a c125 on the tails coming in and um, your smart port is a c100 and then you've got your c40s for your inverters obviously we're on an 80 amp service fuse here so that's what we're tied to but it shows the capabilities should you so need let's go and have a look outside so this is a really versatile system the fact you can stack these batteries up to six modules deep and you know you, you get the versatility to scale it to your consumers demand they can also add in from July this year the DC EV charger and that allows the flow of energy in both directions so you've got the potential of vehicle to grid subject to DNA and manufacturer approvals but it's great that they have that covered off in these products. You can also add an AC EV charger if you wish and that will wire into the system directly as well so if you want to take advantage of your solar generation and battery storage to fill your car up you can do that as we traditionally do with normal AC systems. These battery modules can stack up to 6 deep. We've got an 8 kilowatt hour battery on the bottom here and a 5 kilowatt hour battery above. It's giving a total of 13.44 kilowatt hours, I believe, in the, in the app, which is fantastic. This is going to serve this consumer really well, but if you did need more capacity, you can stack these up and enable you to do so. The output on these is super handy for if you're going off-grid and obviously with the PV generation input in, into all of that as well, it's really really useful the gateway again having the versatility to go off grid and know that you're protected both internal to the installation but also external to that from the dno side of things really really useful so i hope you found this video interesting from both a consumer and an installer's perspective we've tried to show how easy this is to put into play it's just a case of sitting them on top of each other and screwing it back to the wall and there isn't a great deal in terms of cabling between all of the products so you've got your data link cable between the inverter here and the gateway and then you've got your PV inputs, your AC cable and that's about it. It really is that simple. We did the RS485 link wire as well on the comms plug but you don't need that if you are linking through um, a normal Cat5 cable, Cat6 cable between the gateway and the inverter. So we've been able to disconnect that 
and we haven't had to use it even though we wired it up at the start but you live and learn with these things it's the first one we've done um, so if you're an installer out there and you're getting a bit stuck with it the comms side um, you just need to connect to the gateway and to the store itself before we close the video I'll show you what I mean with that so you can have a little look at all the connectors um, and then we'll close this one up so this is where all the cable and terminations are as you can see we've dropped out the wall here just going to pop a bit of silicon in to seal those holes up your two sets of PV strings would go into the inverter there there's a little on off button for the battery at the top there this is the comms plug that I was on about so that's the pins 12 13 and 14 so if you're using a meter um, separate to a gateway you would use those and connect them into your your meter um, if you wasn't running a data link cable which goes in these ethernet ports here you can also use that linking back to the gateway but we've got a direct uh, LAN cable running off this second part here back to the gateway so it does all of its comms through that and it, it sorts itself out we wasn't sure which part to put it in because there's two doesn't matter same at the gateway side it will link together and start talking to each other these are your little links for the cool LED lights on the front super useful so that little plugs just gonna stay in there for the time being for however it is needed but in the application we've got this set up we don't currently need it um, again we've got some PV strings to put into here and the EV charging module when that is released in July we'll have a speak about that at the end of the video and we've left some length to cable here for if this decking ever drops so there's the option to move it if needs be it's not fixed to a finite, le finite length and I can show you that as we step back so it can if ever needs be just drop down there onto the floor but for the minute I can pop this together and show you the finished product so there is a final little test we need to do with all of this and that is to take the grid connection away and see if the router stays on to the installation that's the acid test to all this so we've got our house loads connected the inverters running SPD's on. If we take the grid connection away, the contactor should swing over and we should stay powered. So it's done that and it's now dropped to a off grid condition. And the router over there in the corner of the room is still on. And if you can see that, but the lights are on as well. So there wasn't even a flicker. It has worked an absolute treat. We'll take a little look back inside as we pop the power on now for how it behaves so you can see the grid's gone back but it hasn't instantly thrown the contactor over which is how it should work it needs to resync itself back to the grid and then once the electronics have worked their magic that contactor should pull in um, and it should all go back to a grid connected state so we'll just wait and see if that does it they do vary in length based on the the system and this will go with a hell of a clunk um, with it being a chint uh, contactor and hopefully that's going to do it in just a second <laughs> And there we go it was a little bit longer than a second but that's just making sure that there's a safe state to re-pull that grid connection back in to the system and ensure you don't get a dropout and the router should have stayed connected indeed it has i'll we'll zoom over and have a little look Yo, if i can work my camera properly that's still on fantastic stuff so that's the sig energy storage system hybrid inverter all linked together on this install we've got the pv to add into the mix which we're going to show in a future video along with the ev charger as well you've seen when the grid drops away this will quite happily sustain those house loads it does so automatically and then when the grid is reintroduced it has that wait time to make sure it's safe before we revert back to that state Again, fantastic range of output and input, loads of flexibility, and the fact this is all one product, a true all-in-one, with your PV, your EV, and your battery storage. In what I think is a very nice looking product, to be fair, I think this is one of the better appearing models on the market. There's the nice LED lights on the side that you will have seen earlier on in this video as well, which are under the control of the consumer, so they can change how those display to their individual taste. If you do have any questions about this video, please do drop them in below. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.